Hi guys, my name is Kayla Ponce Leon and I'm here to teach you about anthrax. So anthrax is a serious infectious disease caused by gram-positive rod-shaped bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. Anthrax is extremely rare and people can get sick with anthrax if they come in contact with infected animals or contaminated animal products. The symptoms of anthrax depend on the type of infection and can take anywhere from day one to more than two months to appear in your body for you to actually know or understand that you're, something's really going on with you. All types of anthrax have the potential, if untreated, to spread throughout the body and cause severe illness and can even be fatal. You can have anthrax in three different ways. Inflation anthrax, cutaneous anthrax, and gastrointestinal anthrax. Inflation anthrax can occur when a person inhales spores that are in the air during the industrial processing of contaminated materials such as wool, hides, or hair. Cutaneous anthrax can occur when workers handle contaminated animal products in a cut or scrape on their skin. So from what I saw from the videos I watched and from the links that I was reading with pictures added, inflation anthrax can literally be seen through your body. So you can have sores here, you can have sores here, you can have sores over here, most common on the wrist. And they're re really uncomfortable, of course, because sores are extremely uncomfortable on their own. I can't imagine how these feel. And on top of that, they feel very, like described in the video, they feel very like, hmm, like itchy, like you want to scratch them, but you can't scratch them. And it's, it's a terrible feeling from what the patients were describing. The symptoms can include fever, chills, chest discomfort, shortness of breath, confusion or dizziness, cough, nausea, vomiting, headache, and that's the symptoms most common in cutaneous and infl inhalation, which are the two most common kinds of um, anthrax, since gastrointestinal is a little harder to contract, but that also can include swelling of neck or neck glands, sore throat, painful swallowing, nausea and vomiting, which is even more severe because there will be blood vomiting and gastrointestinal symptoms, diarrhea, um, flushing, like your face turns red, your eyes turn red, stomach pain, or fainting. This usually occurs in countries where livestock are not routinely vaccinated against anthrax and food animals are not inspected prior to slaughter. When you breathe in anthrax, it does go into your lungs. So when anthrax is already building in your system, it grows and it multiplies. Anthrax release toxins into your, into your stream that attack your body, making you sicker and sicker. So it's so much harder to fight and get over. People get infected with anthrax when spores get into their body. The spores then activate and create the anthrax bacteria. This can happen when people breathe in spores, eat food, or drink water that is contaminated with the spores, or get spores in a cut or scrape in the skin. So, what shocked me is that even with how fatal this bacteria can be, it is not contagious. Another reason why I feel like it's super rare, because not only that, but it is not very common for people to work in livestock, so... So on top of that, not even be contagious, that's what makes it such a rare disease. You cannot catch anthrax from another person the way you might catch a cold or the flu. In rare cases, person-to-person -person transmission has been reported with cutaneous anthrax, where discharges from skin lesions might be infectious. In fact, that is why it is such a rare disease. Certain activities, such as Working with infected animals or animal products like wool or hair can increase a person's chances of getting infected. Fortunately, in the United States, gastrointestinal anthrax has rarely been reported, which is the most, this is the hardest one to contra contract, like it's the hardest one. This is because yearly vaccination of livestock is recommended in areas of the United States where animals have had anthrax in the past, and because of the examination of all food animals, which this ensures that they are healthy at the time of slaughter. So in the USA, we're fortunate enough to have all the resources and have all the tests and all the money <laughs> that is needed in order to inspect our animals. And they, from one of the videos I saw, they go through like three different stages, um, sometimes more, you know? So not everyone has that opportunity. In the case that one is found though in the United States, if, in, if it is suspected, doctors perform chest x-rays or CT scans. 
The only ways to confirm an anthrax diagnosis is to measure antibodies or toxins in blood, to test directly for Bacillus anthracis, which is the bacteria that I explained in the beginning, and skin lesion swab, spinal fluid, or respiratory secretions. The anthrax vaccine is currently provided only to people who are at an increased risk of coming in contact with anthrax bacteria, such as members of the U.S. military, laboratory workers, and some people who handle animals or animal products, like livestock handlers or farmers, veterinarians. The vaccine is not licensed for use in children under age 18, adults over age 65, or pregnant and nursing women. So anthrax does have a, vi a vaccine which is amazing right that is something that can help us control and go ahead of the disease and be ready to attack it if the time were to come or to prevent it from even happening um so i just wanted to end with something that i actually was super interested in um so there is evidence that the german army used anthrax to secretly infest livestock and animal animals to the allied nations by neutral partners so like an undercover biological warfare was the injection of argentinian livestock intended for trade with the allied forces that resulted in the death of 200 mules in the 1917s and 18s i think yeah um that's absolutely insane that they used in a very uncommon disease to infest their livestock, their probably their money makers, probably their food for that week or the food that they were gonna eat or they were gonna sell or they, you know, they were going to use. Um, it was just crazy that they used it as a almost like a weapon during the nineteen eight um, the nineteen hundreds, and it was it lasted for a while. It lasted until about like the nineteen fifties actually. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation and i hope um you guys went through the entire thing and thank you so much bye